First Samuel chapter 11. Then Nahash, the Ammonite, that name Nahash means serpent, came up and encamped against Jabez Gilead. Now that's the area of Manasseh. Now let's check out Judges chapter 21. See where we're at. Judges 21. In Judges 21 verse 8. Now we know what happened in Judges 20. That's the Benjaminites that came to this house and said, just like the men of Sodom, give us these men that we may know them. To chapter 21 verse 8. And they said, what one is there of the tribes of Israel that came not up to Mizpah to the Lord? And behold, there came none to the camp from Jabez Gilead to the assembly. So here is a city that's on the wrong side of the Jordan River. And these people did not join in the unity of Israel when this guy chopped up his wife in 12 pieces that we're going to go to Benjamin then we're gonna we're gonna deal with this matter. Everybody but Jabez Gilead showed up. Again, it's the area of Manasseh. It's on the east side of the Jordan River. And it's all kinds of mess. And all the men of Jabesh said unto Nahash, Make a covenant with us, and we will serve thee. You see, we're on the wrong side. We're not in the promised land like we're supposed to be. So there's going to be no help from Israel. We're all by ourselves. We didn't help them in Judges 21. We're an outcast. So if you're going to come, let's make a leap. And Nahash the Ammonite answered them. On this condition, the first and last time that word shows up. Will I make a covenant with you that I may thrust out your right eyes and lay it for reproach unto all Israel? I'm going to make you slaves. I'm going to make you bond people. I am going to humble you. I am going to remove your eyeballs and give you at least one eye that you can do me service. So the fact is, when we look at Israel, we go, na 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 na. That Israel would say, oh man, look what the enemy's done to us. And the elders of Jabesh said unto him, Give us seven days respite, or respite, that's relief, delay. Give us some time. That we may send messengers unto all the coasts of Israel. And then, if there be no man to give us, save us, we will come out to thee. In Judges 21, there was no man of Jabez Gilead that came and helped. We don't know if Israel is going to help us. So they're agreeing to Nahash saying, listen, let me pluck out your eyeballs. At least one of them. And we'll be servant to, to you. But first, let's see if we can find some help. Then came the message to Gibda of Saul. That was again in Judges 20 and 21. And told the tidings in the ears of the people. And all the people lifted up their voices and wept. Well, let's go back to 21 again, Judges. It's playing out again. History is playing out all over again. Here comes messengers. We're in trouble. Judges 21 1. Now the men of Israel have sworn in Mizpah, saying, There shall not any of us give his daughter unto Benjamin to wife. And the people came to the house of God and bowed there. Why? Because in chapter 20, there's war. There's war with Benjamin. In chapter 20, verse 1, then all, is, then all the children of Israel went out. The congregation was gathered together as one man from Dan even to Beersheba with the 
land of Gilead unto the Lord of Mizpah. Why? Because in 1928 to 30, this guy has been insulted. His wife has been sexually abused. She's been killed. He chops her up. And he sends her body parts, 12 of them, all through the coast of Israel saying, look what happened. Now we need to do something. Now, no one's chopped in half in 1 Samuel 11, but here comes the messengers. We're in trouble. We need help. And the people lift up their voices and wept. Here's one of our brothers. Here's one of our brethren. They're in trouble. Lord forbid what they say. We would give ourselves to the enemy and have our eyeballs removed. And behold, Saul came out after the herd out of the field. And Saul said, what ails the people that weep? And they told him the tidings of the men of Jabesh. So he gets word. And the Spirit of the Lord of God came upon Saul. Oh, so chapter 6, I mean chapter 10, verse 6. And the Spirit of the Lord was come upon thee. Verse 11. And the Spirit of God came upon him. Chapter 11, verse 6, the Spirit of God came upon him. That means it left. It's come and gone. The Holy Spirit did not abide with you all the time in the, in the Old Testament as it does with the New Testament Christian that I will never leave thee or forsake thee. That is not an Old Testament promise. Came upon Saul when he heard those tidings, and his anger was kindled greatly. And he took a yoke of oxen and healed them in pieces and sent them throughout all the coasts of Israel by the hands of the messengers, saying, uh, Judges 19.29. You think we were done? With, you thought we were done with Judges, didn't you? Judges 19.29. Seems like Saul knows his history. And when he was coming to his house, he took the knife and laid hold on his concubine and divided her together with her bones and twelve pieces and sent her all the coasts of Israel. Well, he sends his wife. Saul sends oxen throughout Israel. It's it's amazing. The fact is, what is going on here? Judges is playing out. And I'm trying to find something here. Judges chapter 14. And I'm not trying to uh, cruel anybody, but Judges 14, 18. And the men of the city said unto him of the seventh day, before this, the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? And he said unto them, If you had not plowed my female cow, heifer. In Judges 19, a woman, a wife is chopped in pieces. In 1 Samuel 11, oxen are chopped in pieces. And you see Samuel calling his wife a cow. It's almost like Judges is playing out again. Why? Because in Judges, they rejected God, and they rejected God by asking for a king, and now it's a mess all over again. I'm not calling women cows, but isn't it just a weird scripture with scripture? So verse 7 plays out in Judges 19.29. Whosoever comes not forth after Saul and after Samuel, so shall it be done unto, this, unto his oxen. So if you don't come to battle... I'm going to tear your oxen all to pieces. I'm going to destroy your farm animals. Why? Jabez Gilead and judges did not show up to battle. And they lost their daughters. They lost their lives so Benjamin could have women to marry and produce other Benjaminites. So what Saul is calling for the book of Judges and what you see now is I am making sure everybody shows up this time. The fact is that Jabez Gilead 
you didn't show up, I am going to make sure everybody shows up for you. You're going to learn your lesson. And the fear of the Lord fell on all the people, and they came out with one consent. All right, so back to Judges again. Why do we keep going back to Judges? Look what's happening. Uh, I think this one's Judges 20. Judges 20, verse 1. And all the children of Israel went out, and the congregation was gathered together as one man, from Dan even unto Bathsheba. <laughs> There's a unity. Under Saul, here's the unity. There's only one difference. We got a king now. But God's truly not present. He told Samuel, hey, they rejected me, not you. One consent. That's back in Judges, like we saw. And when he numbered them in Bezek, the children of Israel were 300,000, and the men of Judah, 30,000. So there's still now, even before Jeroboam and Rehoboam split the nation, there is now your Israel and we're Judah. While they had their first king, you're you and we are we. Already. And they said unto the messengers that came, Thus shall ye say unto the men of Jabez Gilead, Tomorrow, by that time. I like how they spell that tomorrow. It's, you know, it's two and more. I don't know why we put it together. By the time the sun be hot, about noon, he shall have help. Well, my Bible is really marked. <laughs> and the messengers came and showed it to the men of Jabez, and they were glad. We're getting help. Therefore, the men of Jabez said, Tomorrow we will come out unto you, and ye shall do with us all that seemeth good unto you. Punish us, whatever it is, but we need help. And it was so on the morrow that Saul put the people in three companies. That's quite throughout the Bible. Gideon put his men in three companies. And they came into the midst of the host. In the morning watch, you would find that Mark 6, 48 and Matthew 14, 20. And slew the Ammonites unto the heat of the day. And it came to pass that they which remained were scattered. So that two of them were not left together. So, I mean, they're just, they're gone. They're running. You can't even get a pair of Ammonites together. And the people said to Samuel, Who is he that said, Shall Saul reign over us? Bring the men that we may put them to death. Back chapter 10, verse 27. 10, 27. But the children of Belial said, How shall this man save us? And they despised him and brought him no present. But he held his feet. These are the men. Well, that guy, he hid himself. He ain't going to save us. Who does he think he is? Now the people of Israel said, Well, where are those men? We're going to put them to death. They rebelled against the king. And Saul said, There shall not a man be put to death this day. For today, look at that, it's today and tomorrow, the Lord has wrought salvation in Israel, giving God the credit. Then said Samuel to the people, Come, let us go to Gilgal and renew, renew the kingdom there. Gotta watch your writing. Because people say in the beginning of this chapter, Saul was never king. Yes, he was. Well, he's get, And all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. Well, let's go back over here to chapter 10, verse 1. Wasn't he made king? In chapter 10, verse 1, then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? Remember, it was just Saul and Samuel. Not even Saul's servant. He was told to go ahead. He's anointed king. What's going on over here in chapter 11? He's anointed king with the whole people saying, Yeah, we want him king. 
It's a public anointing. The people are seeing, they are watching. And all the people went to Gilgal, and there they they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. And there they sacrificed sacrifices of peace offerings before the Lord. And there Saul and all the men of Israel rejoiced greatly. He's been publicly accepted to be the king. And so Samuel re-anoints him before the people. 